try to work out things, you never can know beyond what God wants you to know. So obviously in life, even on our individual life, there are things that beat our imagination. There are things we try to understand. How does this thing work? Yes, we can understand. And you, you continue to ask, where is this particular thing like this? A lot of us have asked these questions and try to unravel certain secrets, certain mysteries, and yet we haven't been able to find out anything. And we are saying that needless of anyone engaging in any form of findings. But the Bible has told us that the ways of God pass finding out. He exists in mystery. He has clothed himself in mystery. So, there are things you cannot know. You cannot know. <laughs> and so that which you cannot know, except you are in the spirit, you will be very worried. You will be in trouble. Because the fear is that how will it pass out? How will it end? How is it going to happen? How will it, will it start? In the event that this or that, so you keep worrying. But the truth is that a man must not worry over that which is greater than him. A man should not disturb himself over that which he does not have control over. A man should not worry, stress himself over that which is beyond him and is square within the jurisdiction and the discretion of the power of God. But what it is required of us is that we trust him for he cares, for he loves us. Trust him that whatever it, it is, it will end well. Trust him, whatever it is you want to do, it will start well and end well. Trust him that whatever barrier, whatever hindrance, whatever situation, whatever difficulty, whatever may be the challenges that you may have encountered in your, your path of progress, it is possible you are going to surmount it. It is possible he will clear the way. You are trusting him. Who have always done it to also do it that which he did yesterday and you raise your hands of praise you are trusting him today he will do it again he who lifted you when men dissected you he lifted you you are trusting him today you will trust him tomorrow that in a similar circumstance or even in a quite different scenario he also because he loves and he cares he will still give you a lifting hand and will lift you whatever it is you have to learn to trust that which you do not know. Trust him, he, he knows it and he will do it. So, that element of trust is important that we completely screw our faith in trust. Because if you have the faith and you cannot trust him for that which you do not know, fear will grip you and it will cripple your faith, it will weaken your faith. But if you have the faith and you have the trust, no matter how things, no matter the way, no matter the, the situation, no matter the darkness, no matter how hopeless the situation seems, no matter how everywhere may look very dark, you cannot see where you are going. But you are walking in faith, trusting Him, because the word says, For we walk not by sight. So those that walk by sight, they will fear everywhere look that where am I even going? Where am I going? But those who are trusting him cannot ask where are you going? Because though there are things you do not know, there are things you cannot see, there are things you have even, even tried to understand, yet you have not understood them and you cannot. But one thing is not of evil, but of good, that you have good health and you are alive, you are successful, and men will hear nice things, good things. Men will hear of your growth and your success. This is the will of God for signing off. So if we know that this is how it works, nobody will trouble himself. This is the last month for the year. A lot are rejoicing for various achievements recorded. Look at me. We're on the last month. The year has ended. What will I say I have achieved? I can't even see anything I have achieved. 
But I do know that children of God belong to those, everyone that believes and is trusting God, belong to that group that are rejoicing. Yet the year has ended, they have reason to be happy. The year has ended, there are so many who are not here now to say the year is almost ending. They would have been happy to say whether they have food or not to eat, but that they are on earth to see the 12th month of the year. They would have been happy. Because even you alive, there are certain things that happen to you. You will say, even if I do not have food to eat, even if I, I just, I just need good health, I just need to be alive. I don't even need cars. I don't need money, I don't have it. Whether you have goals, and these goals have not been actualized yet, it's not a reason for you to fear. What did the Bible say? The Bible says that a day is like a thousand years unto the Lord. A day. So that which men have planned, that this plan is realizable within a period of 12 months. And so this is the 12 months, and then upon assessment, uh, achievement is very decimal, quite small. Quite small. And then knowing that they have about maybe 27 days, about 27 days to end, say, look, I was supposed to achieve this milestone for 12 calendar months. Now, with what I have achieved by my calculation, is even not up to three months. What is the possibility that we don't need the remaining 27 days or thereabouts? Anyone who reasons like that is not trusting the Lord. You have to trust him who says a day is like a thousand. So that which you on your own, by your calculation, by your senses, by your perception, by your knowledge, by who you know, by your ability, you have worked it out that you can achieve this within the period of 12 months. He can do that in a second, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. He can change the story, he can change the narrative, he can change your situation, everything become new and quite new. And glory and honor will be given only to him alone. So trust him. So if I shall put his trust, the Lord shall not be ashamed. So that is my favorite scripture. I believe it and it works for me. And if you believe it and you hold on to it, no matter the situation, no matter the torment, no matter the darkness, no matter the heat, no matter the hopelessness, no matter the level of conspiracy the gang of, no matter the effort of men against you, no matter what anybody may be doing or you know not doing, no matter what some have failed to do, which would have been of hell, no matter what they have done to even work it against you. Those of you, it does not matter. You are trusting God for everything. Trust Him for your life. Trust Him for your health. Trust Him for your daily feeding. Daily feeding. Trust Him for your daily survival. For the truth is that they that survive by His mercy, He worked out things for them. He work out things for them. Men wear it because we do not see. Like we said earlier, when we started, we said there are so many things we do not know. There are so many things we cannot see. And yet we desire to see these things to, 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 to comfort ourselves. Because men will always say seeing is believing. But in God, in God, seeing is necessarily not believing. If you wait until you see, you will be called a Thomas and you become an unbeliever. Seeing is not believing with God. It's that trusting for which you have not, for what you have not seen. Trust Him. You have not seen it, and don't ask Him how. When God said, "I will do this for you," don't ask Him how. Don't begin to imagine, and then you meet Him. You will weigh a lot of factors. For instance, the Father said to wife, is that He's going to place a lot of factors. He hasn't bought the land yet. He does not have money for the land. He hasn't gotten money for the land. And yet, you are saying, I will build the house before the year end. Where is the land? Where is even the money? To even start the building, how? How? And you say, even if I have the money now, is it possible to build the house? 
the fourth year, it is very, very possible. <laughs> it is very, very possible. Very possible. Very. What you can go out now, tomorrow, as the service will, will finish the letter, and the father said, Go, I am before and behind. I'll open your way. Favor, mercy, grace, blessings, increase, love, success, everywhere. And tomorrow, you just meet a gentleman on the way. Not your friend, not someone you have met before. And then, business discussion. Business discussion. And from there, I said, Oh, I'd like to walk with you. Um, have you got a house? Have you got a house? I have some partners in Lagos. You know, we want to move in. We don't like this hotel arrangement. He said, No, I don't have a house. It's okay. If I give you money, can you buy? I don't want it to. Just is your house. Is your house. This job we are doing is for a space of maybe three years. And so, whatever house you can do, you can just do anything. It's your house. But who will who, 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 who stay there at the end of the job? Then we meet. If your house, do it, everything in your name. The thing never starts. While your heart is saying this or let me, let me, let me, let me for one night. <laughs> Before you know, you say, keep your uh, uh, account. Bam, bam, money down in 50 million naira. 50 million naira. Now, with this money now, he said, look, we have um, a firm, a constructing firm that partners with us. Don't stress yourself. Let's just negotiate with them. How much it will take for them to build it within the few days we have. Because we have to stay there and celebrate Christmas. And then they invite Julian Venture. And say, Julian Venture said, very possible. Okay. And then, while you were contemplating in your mind how the, the partner said, look, you know, better, let us know the cause of furnishing. So they are building and furnishing. Everything in your name. And then before you know, you are just going every day to, to, to see what is going on. Before your very eyes, a house is standing. Fence round. Mopola and security, they stand everywhere. The guard, the watch. Till they came. Oh! Many are higher. Wash the house. Wash everywhere. Decorate everywhere. It's your house. You see, God, is this how you walk? That is how he walks. Yes. He honors his men. He honors his works. He does not go back on that which he has said. If you know how he or how mighty he is, you will not joke. Trust is very important. Trust is very because the word has said that with man it is impossible. But that which is with God it is very possible. Because when I say to them, it is very difficult for a rich man who has been carried away by the cares of life to enter into the kingdom of God. Then the disciple Peter particularly asked God, what is the possibility then? What is the possibility that we will also enter this kingdom of God? Because you know, we don't want to be poor. Everybody wants to have something in their hand. And Christ said to, to Peter, With men, it is impossible. But with God, it is possible. It is possible. Very, very possible. So nobody should underrate what God will do at any given time. For the most difficult thing to change, the most difficult thing to walk, is easy to walk on every other thing. Man is the most difficult thing to walk on. You must know this as the truth. If you want to turn your car now to a brand new can you can you can you, you can do it. 
your house that you you buy maybe three five days ago you want to completely turn it around you can do that and it's not going to ask you questions your car will ask you why do you want to repaint me why do you want to change the color why do you want to change the engine why do you want to add a new bumper that is a new 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 model if you want to do a parapet in a house that was not originally built with the parapet that building is not going to ask you why are you de-roofing the roof and the roof, do, do, do parapet so whatever you want to transform in life you can do but man will always resist man will ask you why man but as difficult as man is the word says that go blink as you blink you know something attempts to enter your eyes you don't blink and open your eyes so within that short time he said he will change man and changing man it means changing the world and changing the world it means transforming the whole earth so it's a series a series and pragmatic development towards what heaven ought to be on earth is that which the world said that the father will do it within a blink of an eye then if you trust him what is it that he will not do for you? If you are in challenging difficulties, he said, I am trusting the Father. I know he has never said, I'm trusting him. I have never read anywhere that those who trusted him be greater. I have not read in any book that those who surrender their lives end up be greater. I have never. So he will not start with me. He will not. And I know that his works. The words of God is what? Sacrosan. We have a captain. And the father is the captain. He has invited each and every one of us to his ship. He is steering the ship. Don't stay in the ship where God is the captain and lament and trouble your heart and query and worry and cry and become weary. Some of you have cried and become weak. Some look confused. Some look to be in darkness. You cannot be in darkness in the midst of great light. In the midst of the great light, Christ says that I am alive. Why am with you? Make a haste to abide with it. For whosoever is walking on the path of darkness will not know where he is going. But whosoever walked on the path of light, of course, will know. So if you are trusting the Father, you will know where it will end. In a, in a given situation, in a given situation, no matter how hard, no matter how tough, no matter how hopeless, as long, even if it is hurt, even if it is hurt, even if doctor says, this is the last breath, watch him, watch him. If he breathe that breath, that will be the end. And as a father, as a mother, as a patient yourself, and you say to doctor, doctor, you know what? That will not be my last breath. Say so what do you say? Repeat it again. Doctor, that will not be my last breath. I am trusting God, the giver of breath. He is the bread of life. He, he, he does not deny it to those that trust him. I may be sick yet, but that is not my last breath. And if the parents are also faithful to say, yes, doctor, we affirm that which our son has said, that which our daughter has said. That is not going to be his last breath. We have been holding unto God and he's been very faithful. What a beautiful thing to say. As I'm saying, you just imagine that you are in a hospital and something play out. Imagine that the heaven will open. As you give praise and honor unto him, there will be joy in heaven. And no matter the situation, the heaven will be open. And that ho hospital, the, 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 the doctor there, nurses, all of them will feel the presence of God. I tell you the truth. They will feel it. He is worthy of praise. He is.
from time to time, you get to a, a, a point where you see a lot of drawbacks. You see drawbacks. What do you do at some point? Whenever it looks as if you are moving on very well, and at some point it looks as if things are not going the way you were going before, and you are not happy with the development of the time, what, what do you do? Is to boost your trust. Charge your faith. And you charge your faith by speaking the words. Remember his goodness. Remember his grace. Recount what you know he has done before for you. What he has done for others. Recount it, recollect them, reflect it. Go into thinking and praise. Building your choice. Say, though it looks as if I'm in a tight corner. But I know with thee I will surmount it. I will come out. I know it's a face. I will move away from it. I'm trusting and believing. I have not been walking on my own but on thy way i go i trust you god you'll be walking my journey when you speak you are hearers admire you they will admire you they admire your courage they admire your belief their faith they admire your confidence and that is the reason why the word says those that put their trust he will not put them to shame because when you so proclaim faith when you profess it, when you say it in such a confident manner, you have said it, everybody have heard, those around have heard, God is put to test. He will prove his mind. He will prove, prove, prove that yes, it was his words that you are holding on to. That is the way he works. Read the second Bible book lesson. A child of God should not die inside the father for everything. Go to bed, knock your head. If you go out today, whatever comes out, be happy and be contented. Give thanks unto him. Tell him that I know that this is your way of consigning me for today. I'm all right. However, I look forward to a greater tomorrow. I know tomorrow is fulfilling. Tomorrow has a lot of things for us. It's a thing to hope for. So a child of God must always hope for tomorrow. So a hope for tomorrow is trusting Him. What next? You have seen today. Yes, you have seen the, the challenges of today. You have seen the, the, the message today, the grace today. You have seen everything today. Yes, but there is something next. It's not ending with this. It's not ending with this. So when they say, go and see him, everything he had has finished. You see how he's now managing. The Lord has not been heard. The Lord has not been saved. It has not been saved yet. Whatever it is said today, that you are in challenges, you are in, you are in, you are you are, you are, you are in difficulty. You had a car. And they say, look at him, he's even drinking now. He has sold his car. You had a house. He said, look at him. To, to maintain the house is not possible. Who sent him to go and build the, the, the big house? Now to maintain it. You see, man knows how to talk rubbish. Man knows how to talk rubbish. And on the list, people, anybody that is trusting God, don't underrate the person. Don't underrate anybody who is holding on to faith, trusting the Father. Don't underrate. Because tomorrow, that mouth that you have, you know, that mouth will become shut up. And then you use to tell, if I'm around, I bring plaster. Then we plaster it. And say silence. Give God thanks. Let us give God thanks. In silence and praise. It's not church or church or church. Because tomorrow, you might wake up to say, ah, see, you think I'm too, too. You see? That guy where that, that person said, now he has bought two new jeeps. He has bought two new jeeps. He has even bought one for the church. What? Super. That means the last was not hard. As at the time, the enemy began to run their mouths. You see how? They say, hey, his life don't finish. Nothing, nothing. And if truly at the time, you have nothing in your hand. All you need to say, the Lord has not been saved. 
the land has not been had. If anybody comes to tell you, eh, this is what they are gossiping. They are saying that you don't have money. They are saying that you used to eat from, uh, from hand to mouth. They are just saying the land has not been had. Let my critics wait and see what God will do. For he is not known to fail. For the word says, whosoever believe in and put his trust, he shall not go ashamed. All that the critics and the enemies want to do is to expose you to shame. Resist the shame. The last has not been had. Whatever the situation might be for which they think that the worst has happened, or you are struggling, things are so tough, the last has not been had. Because it will always end in praise. It will end in joy. It will end in glory. Ho! Oh, Ho! Oh, Ho! Oh. So, as we are here now, we are saying, it, it looks as if you are still very, very far from your set goal, from your planned achievements. Relax. The last has not been said, but the year has not ended. The year has not finished. For everything about the Lord, it's about building up. He build up. He build up. So your development has been building up. Your success has been building up. Your breakthrough has been building up. Everything that will give you joy and give God glory has been building up. So the state of which it is right now, I do not know. You don't know. And that is why we have to trust Him. Because He will finish it. He will finish it. He will certainly finish it. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. He said, He who has called you, He who has called you unto Himself, will fulfill your, your calling. That which He has promised, He will do it. He will finish it. He will. So, whatever you are meant to have for the year, this year you see, whatever any of us is meant to have by the divine arrangement of the Father, even if it remains one hour, one minute to end the year. I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth from the scripture. The truth from experience and faith. From spiritual knowledge and understanding. Even if it remain half minute, a second, he will do it. As long as it's part of his plan for your life and for the year, he will. And so we ought to Knowing that this is how it is, nobody should trouble himself. Don't worry, don't lament, don't feel low, don't feel less, do not feel high, but trust him. Hang in there. Continue to build your trust. Let him finish his work, and then men will adore you. Let him finish his work, and men will look at you and say, You are, you are, you are beautiful. God is he that makes one beautiful. When God has finished his work on you, men will admire you. Allow him to finish his work. Allow him to finish his work. If one is very sick, one is very sick, the body will completely machine. You look older than your real age. You look cranky. When the great healer has finished the healing process and he will now commence building, building, reviving. You see, and after he has revived and reinvigorated, the entire system and the entire blood cells are fully activated. And then you see the beauty coming out. You see the skin shining. You see the wrinkles disappear. You see the age, that great age that has come, say they look even uh, older than the mother, old, 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 uh, older than his father. All that age will disappear and will become you. And then men will look at you and say, You are very beautiful. <laughs> Such is what the scripture says. This is the Lord's doing. But then, Mother does in our eyes. So he, does, he is known to do things that would marvel men. 
He is known to do things and finish it excellently and beautifully. Yes. Trust him. Trust him. He is not selective. He is not tribalistic. He is not. He is not selfish. He is not like us. We are men. We can be selfish. We can be selective. We can be sentimental. You, you can have preferred brothers and sisters. God does not have a preferred son. There is no preferred daughter. There is nothing like sentimental, oh, this one is from my community, from my village. There is no such thing. The universal spirit is everywhere. He is universal in every sense of it. In equality for all men, justice for all men, fairness and equity for all. Those he prefers are those that believe in him, those that have faith in him, those that are trusting him. If you talk about prefer, if you talk about sentiment of God, you call it se sentiment, but the Bible says that is the righteousness of God. The exercise of God's discretion in favor of anyone. You could call it sentiment, you could call it favor, and you have favoritism, and whatever you call it. But the Bible says it is the righteousness of God. And that righteousness of God is to the end that we should trust Him. So that we will be counted among those who shall benefit from His righteousness. Because of course, at this appointed time, He will exercise His mercy discretionary. Bless you. Wonderful. You have been there since. Hmm. St. John Gospel chapter 14, verses 1. Let not your heart be troubled. He believed in God, believe also in him, live the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Matthias was a disciple that was used to replace uh, Judas in character. You see? So, I don't know whether because he was used to replace, Matthias has become there. Uh, <laughs> it's a little matter for Matthias. <laughs> oh! Oh! The Father does not want us to carry it. Because when you carry a burden that is too heavy, it will affect your joy. It will affect your peace. It will affect your faith-based activities and performance. Faith-based activities are done excellently in a state of joy and peace, harmony. And the moment a man is not as happy as he ought to be, such a man is not going to do his best. When you hear a high mood, it's a joyful mood, it's a peaceful mood, it's a harmonious mood. This is the mood with which you can serve God. Peace and harmony and joy, nothing else. And so you must endeavor to work very hard to make sure that you do not carry a burden that will become very heavy, that will affect the state of mind, affect the peace affect the harmony in you, affect the joy in you, so that it will not cause a problem between you and your people. Trust him. Leave your problems unto God. Who knows it all? He knows how to handle it. He knows what happened. He knows how it started. He knows where he will end it. He knows where he will say, hush. Hold it. The enemies may be hanging their way, and it looks as if that you are helpless. He is watching at them. He knows at what point you say, Holy! Enough! Enough! So you just have to know. Because some of us, out of ignorance, not knowing how the Father works, then we stress ourselves and become very troubled. Know how He works. For the Bible has always said, Understand what they will. Do. They use you as that to wipe their hands and wipe their foot. That is not His will. His will is that. Yes, you may be attacked. That is it. You may be attacked, but you'll be victorious. And the reason why we say it's part of his will, because anything that is within the confine of understanding of God, is it anything within the confine of his understanding is his will. 
We have always referred you to what Christ said in John, John 17, verse 15, where Christ in his prayers, he said to the Father, I have given your word unto your people. They have received this word, they have built their faith, they have built their trust, they believe you, they love you, but the world have hated them, even as they hated me, and they want to kill me. They have hated them. They also want to kill them. Now you want to take me out of this world by reason of death. I do not pray that you take these ones who are also suffering from the same attack and hatred at your instance. Don't take them out of this world, but keep them from evil. Keep them away from evil. You see, that is a total prayer that one will know that God knows the evil days and the manipulations of the, the, the manipulations of the wicked against God through them. But we are meant to stay. When his heart was filled, when he saw the hatred and the wickedness, unjustifiably. I said, I am from the Father. And what I hear, I say of the Father. And the Father in me, I am in him. And you are angry. You want to, to kill me. And those who share in the belief, you want to kill them. Christ's heart was filled up. And he needed to really give consolation and authority unto those that share in the belief, he said to them. They may come against you, but don't run. Stand. And I say to you, where, where will you run to? Because in this world, if you don't see, you decide to stand and trust God for victory from the hands of the wicked. And you, you, you want to run, you will run until you fall into a dish. You will run until maybe one day you say, ah, I don't if I want to kill, kill me now. So don't run. Don't run. There is a preparatory ground that first there will be hatred. But victory is assured. That is why even the Father said, yeah. Enemies here and there. This thing should not affect you. It shouldn't affect you at all. Build your trust. Build your trust and always reflect on it. Say it. Say it. Words are very powerful. Words are very powerful. Learn to speak your liberty. Learn to speak the love upon your life. Say it, the love of God upon your life. Learn to recount the grace upon your life, the mercy of God upon your life. We have one mission to you that God has conscience. God has conscience. And so a faithful man should always strive or strive to touch. The, the conscience of God and his conscience is in recounting his grace, his mercy. When you praise him, in difficulty you praise him and you sing his praises. Like the Bible says, say amen to him. Say thank you Father for answering my prayers. So he shifted to him. Will he, will he fail you? He will not now. But when you have double minded, you are afraid. You are not sure. You are not sure. You lose here and there. Something against you. But then you don't know exactly what they are doing. You may perceive. You may perceive. But God does not perceive. He knows the facts. The concrete, the absolute facts. He knows it. So don't worry yourself over what people are doing. But trust him for deliverance. Trust him. He, he who will set you free and justify you. He who said that in, 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 you know. Men will speak of you as of instance. He said, God, this God is very miracle and very wonderful. You see, I know one man. This man, for all the years I knew him, he's been struggling, struggling, struggling. Struggling. Sometimes I sympathize with him. I share what I have with him. You see, life has been very hard with him. But if you see the same man now, and the man is very generous. Though. You see, 
all the years we used to call him a country. We used to call him, you know, somebody that does not even uh, give any God or share anything. But now the man shares very generous, very kind. He is generous in donation. He is generous in welfare. He is generous in everywhere. If you see how he's talk, you see God is wonderful. I have people say I be alive. Bro. Say I see that kind of man who has been pretty and my feet suffer. Now if you see total turn around. Who have done that? It is only God that does that. He does it in all cases. That's why you say, even when people say you are finished, when people call you useless, when, when people say your life is hopeless, nothing come, tell them the dance has not been hard. You may be saying whatever you are saying on the basis of your limited knowledge. I don't want to join issues with you, but I pray God to keep you alive for the last of what God will do in my life to be saved. That you will be alive and see it. When you respond that, walk away. Confidently. Confidently. Show the strength of your faith everywhere. Everywhere. Recognize God in your life. Recognize what the Father is doing. Say it from your mouth. Say it. Things will work out well. Yes, God will pass. Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whether he goeth. While ye have light, believe in the light, that he may be the children of light. This things speak Jesus, and departed, and did hide himself from them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Brethren, have you seen? While we have the light of God, convincingly shown constant, it does not change. So let us follow the path of the light that we know. Follow the path of light that you know, and you are sure where to end. You are sure. You are very, very sure. We have said to, to you, do not be one of those Christians that ask. Father, how will you make it happen? How? Don't ask such questions. Walk by faith. With strong belief and trust. With strong belief and trust. One um, vision while it was a young man, I should tell you that these messages you have been given, that he will, he will take you to overseas, where white men will receive these messages from you. you see? And everybody kept quiet when he finished. That vision stood up. He, he, he gave a vision and gave a vision. He, he said he takes an exception to the insults for somebody in the name of vision to tell him that this vision, he will give it, he will go to overseas when his own father has never seen Lagos. His mother has never reached um, Enugu and is telling him who has never gone to school? How will he go? How? Ah. That that is the highest of insults. That if the father does not show you anything, keep quiet. You see, one day, one day, not too long, in his healing home, Three white men with one black man came from Mogi. The black man is uh, the father's son. He brought these three white men. And they now introduced them. They are having challenges. 
spiritual problems. So when they discuss with him, he now told them that if they can follow him to his church, that the prophet of God will pray for them and they opted to follow. That's why they are here. And the man sang song, sang song for prayer. And then the father opened his eyes and now saw what the problem is. He, this one, pa, 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 it's saying not true. Pa, 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 it's saying true. Pa, pa, pa. So, throughout their time in Nigeria, for the time that the contract lasts, they were always going there. Six months to the time they were to go, the three of them went to him and pleaded. See, they want to go with him. They want to go with him. The man said, go with me to go and do what? He said, no, when we reach there, we will start this branch there. That this thing they are, they are benefiting here. They want their families to benefit. That their families do not know the father. They don't know that you can solve their problems like this. And the man said, I'm not an educated man. He said, no, it does not require in, uh, education. He said, but I cannot even speak English well. You know here, I have an interpreter. He said, yeah, they will carry you an interpreter. When they reach there, you will go to, to school. And the man said, ah. so that interpreter, now to, have you remember that message that you were given from years ago? The man bowed his head and said, I am ready. Ho! 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 And that the tea now. The man is operating in the uh, US. Tea now. Tea now. What about a, 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 a mother? A, the better mother that most people do not value. A better mother that cooks fish morning and evening, morning and evening, every time. A poor woman, an uneducated woman, laboring and cooking fish. One day, after she has cooked and brethren have enjoyed this feast, and then during messages, and then a message was given to her and said, Sister, the father said you should bow down your head. That this feast you cook here, you will not continue to cook, cook, cook. You will, you will take you to the US. You will take you to here. The man laughed, laughed. He said, These people, when I cook fish, fish sleep on her mouth. I can't they talk anyhow. He <laughs> said, You see? But not do, not do. God bless that woman. She gave birth to beautiful ladies. Beautiful ladies. Young, young girl, very fine, beautiful. They all grow up. You know, you don't know how far a child can go. If God bless you with children, you don't know how far they can go. That's why the father said, love the children. Don't beat them. Don't trouble them. You don't know how far. The children, a child can change the whole of your fortune. A child, one, can change the whole of your fortune. You see? These children are gifts to help, to change the family history, to change narrative, to bring about joy, bring about peace. That's what they do. They come to the, to the family with wealth. They come with very high prospects. They come with changes. They come with news. They come that's why I say anybody that worries will say the last has not been heard. The last has not been heard. If you see me as all is not well with me, what about the children? So this woman, when it was appointed time, first what somebody came from overseas, married the one of the daughters, Fian overseas. And from there, an arrangement is made to say, ah, you have the sister, you look at the picture, and then you got your sister out and so before you know, somebody came again from there, married the second woman. Before you know, say, ah, that other you are of your uh, sister. I don't know if you like me or not. You came and married. All the girl children were married overseas. And then in this uh, culture where we do of uh, Omogo. Uh -huh. uh, you understand the, the matter now? Uh -huh. <laughs> ho! 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 You see, I'm, mother, where they cook this 
for us with a chop, chop, chop. Now, nah, mother, day for all. Now, talk from one country to the other, one country to the other, or move for here and there. Nobody can see mother again for Nigeria. The, the message never manifests. So nobody knows what will happen tomorrow. Don't worry your heart. Don't trouble yourself. Just throw the father. You wake up every day giving thanks. But pray for life. Pray for good health. Who we'll always will tell you. The two things you must not fail to pray is health and life. As long as you have these two, you have. So as you are encouraged today, continue to believe, continue to hold on, 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 on to him. Trust him. Tomorrow is great. Tomorrow shall be very, very great. There will always be tomorrow. And tomorrow comes with surprises. And these surprises are good surprises. Tomorrow will never bring disappointment. Tomorrow will never come to make you worse. Tomorrow by his grace will make you better. Tomorrow by his grace will be tomorrow for the fulfillment of his words. Tomorrow shall be for the fulfillment of his promises. Tomorrow shall be for the manifestation of his will. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, Christian brethren, for each and every one of you who have received this word today, who have received this word, believe it, that the word of God is so true and constant and does not change, that the Father is very faithful and he, 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 he fulfills his words, his promises, and as you have had today, the Father has assured you of a victorious end of the year 2023 in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has assured you of life. None shall die. For you have counted and have numbered you all. I will tell you from the beginning till now. You have been numbered. And not grow. He will victoriously. Victoriously. All your desires. All your wishes. All your supplications. That are in line with his will concerning you. All of these will manifest. You will continually have joy. And continually have peace. Let the peace and blessings of the Holy Father that come with great joy establish you this way, in trust, in hope, and in faith, even now and forevermore. Amen. Beloved Christian, brethren, of our Lord Jesus Christ, let us appraise you today, Father, in the Lord of our Lord Jesus Christ, let us appraise you today, Father, in the forevermore. Holy, 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 my child, and my Father, we thank you, Father, for this wonderful word of faith, this wonderful word of hope, Father, that we give to us this day. We thank you, Father, for giving us the ability to put the party, to party this word, Father. That this word will bear in our hearts, Father, that we will trust in thee, that we will say a wonderful month to now forevermore. Let us appear to the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us appear to the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us appear to the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ.